Much of the current concern about global warming has been generated by Al Gore's documentary, An Inconvenient Truth. This Oscar-winning film declares that the world is in danger from flooding and extreme weather. But after a lengthy hearing, the British High Court has found that the documentary is scientifically flawed and has nine significant exaggerations and factual errors. Environmentalists claim, and children believe, that melting glaciers and polar ice will cause catastrophic sea level rise. They blame man-made global warming. But experts disagree. Shun Ichiaka Sufu is a professor of physics and the founding director of the International Arctic Research Centre at the University of Alaska. He is one of hundreds of scientists whose research contradicts the alarmist beliefs of environmentalists. Professor Akasufu devoted the last 50 years to studying the Arctic climate, and his research proves that the receding of ice sheets is due to natural forces and is not caused by humans. Of course, we have uh, ice in the Arctic Ocean, and uh, it has been receding. But again, this receding began around 18, 1850 not just, you know, the last 50 years. That's happened all the time as a natural phenomenon. So uh, it's very difficult to simply associate all the changes in the ice to uh, carbon dioxide. There's a real unbalanced situation in the media, always trying to look for the global warming connection. The fact that the Antarctic ice sheet, on the, the sea ice around Antarctic is growing rapidly. The fact that the Arctic ice is not disappearing the way that we've been told. As a matter of fact, it came back even larger last year, and this year looks like it's going to be even more extensive, but that doesn't get reported in many media. Another area of an inconvenient truth that was found to be uh, inaccurate was the issue of polar bears. Actually, the number of polar bears are increasing in quite a few of the areas of their range. There is no evidence whatsoever that the polar bear population is declining, and the main threat to polar bears is hunting by human beings, not climate change. I don't believe that there is a climate catastrophe. I don't use the word chaos or disaster to describe the present changes in climate which are well within natural variations that have occurred in the past history of the Earth. As a matter of fact, we're in an ice age right now. It may be an interglacial period, but it's only 14.2 degrees Celsius average temperature on the Earth today. At the height of the ice age, it was about 2.2 degrees cooler at around 12 degrees. But through much of the Earth's history, it's been at 22 degrees Celsius when there was no ice at either pole and all the land was tropical and subtropical. In fact, ice is the enemy of life. One of the disturbing facets of the global warming debate is the suggestion that the science is settled uh, and there is something uh, wrong with uh, revisiting uh, what we claim to know. You know, in 1975, Newsweek magazine had an interesting story titled The Cooling World. And it says, among other things, to scientists, these seemingly disparate incidents represent the advanced signs of fundamental changes in the world's weather. The central fact is that after three quarters of a century of extraordinarily mild conditions, the Earth climate seems to be cooling down. Now, 1975 isn't prehistory. Some of the same scientists who are telling now that we're warming were active uh, back then. In the 1970s, one of those who believed the Earth was facing an ice age caused by humans was Professor Stephen Schneider of Stanford University. However, Professor Schneider is now one of the leading scientists claiming the Earth is heating up because of man-made global warming. He's a senior member of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and a close advisor to former Vice President Al Gore. Despite this dramatic reversal of the scientific consensus, Professor Schneider, Al Gore and their supporters are now urging governments to increase taxes and ban oil, coal and gas, the fossil fuels that are the main source of the world's cheap energy. We are told that carbon dioxide is toxic and a pollutant, or a toxic pollutant, even better. Now, it's so, it's so ironic because anybody who knows anything about biology knows that carbon dioxide is the most important nutrient for all of life. It is the, 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 the basically the currency of life. 
In the 1980s, Lord Nigel Lawson was the UK's energy minister and then chancellor. Now a member of the House of Lords Economics Committee, he was part of a parliamentary inquiry into global warming. The plan is to get an international agreement in which everybody cuts out uh, carbon-based energy. That is going to put up energy costs in, in, around the world, including the developing world, slow down, therefore, their economic development, and cause millions and millions of unnecessary deaths. Enormous suffering in these countries, quite unnecessary. I think that the man in the street is only just beginning to focus on what all this rhetoric in practice will mean to him or her. What it means is a sharply increased cost of energy and it means a slower rate of economic growth uh, and uh, less prosperity all round than would otherwise be the case. <laughs> My opinion, far too many people on this planet. I know a lot of environmentalists say there are far too many people on the earth. Well, who are they wanting to get rid of? Because you know they're not going to line themselves up first because they have an agenda, they have a job to do. So they must be here. So they're going to get rid of people like, or in their minds, it would be ideal to get rid of people, the average American, people like my husband and I and our children and people in third world countries like in Africa Lord knows the environmentalists aren't doing anything to help them so are they gonna add them to the list we're human beings we all have a right to be here that is basically the problem is that a lot of environmental activists still have not come to accept that the humans are also part of the environment and that they are important too I have a list of what I call characteristics of environmental extremists that I run through. And the first point in that list is that they tend to actually be anti-human. They depict human beings as some kind of malignancy or cancer on the face of the earth, that there's way too many of us. Guys like Paul Watson and a whole bunch of his ilk are coming out and saying there should only be one billion people, not six billion people. And I'm going like, why don't you volunteer first then? Right? What a crazy thing to say. That is not exactly a constructive approach. Well, I, I think, unfortunately, a lot of the environmentalists don't really care about the impact on human beings of policies that they're putting forward. When they suggest that we should ban chlorine worldwide, what do they want? A cholera epidemic? If we drink water with communicable diseases in it that, isn't be, that we're not being protected? What do they want to go back to the Dark Ages and the Black Plague? You know, they don't seem to really care about the repercussions on human beings. And they, they, they care more about fish eggs than they do about children. And there's something immoral about that, in my estimation. I'm not saying that fish eggs aren't important or that seals aren't important. I fought for wild nature all through my years with Greenpeace, and I'm proud of what we did back then. But I do not understand how people can just write off the whole human race as if it is some kind of cancer on the face of the earth and deserves to be eliminated. That, to me, basically is an act against humanity. 